Good morning everyone. I hope you all are well and fine. In our last class we discussed about chapter 4 that is earth structure. Now in this class we will move forward to the landforms of the earth. Before discussing this chapter let's recall some important things from the last chapter. So if you remember you can identify that I told you all the earth's interior it is divided into three parts. One is core that is the bottommost part, middle one is mantle and the uppermost part is known as crust. But I did not tell you about one important feature that is present here. It is located just above of upper mantle. Okay. This is known as asthenosphere. What is the meaning of this asthenosphere? A S T H E asthe no N N O S P H E R E. Please write the spelling in correct way, okay? Because this spelling is little bit long. So what is asthenosphere? Generally, it lies between upper mantle and crust. And the nature of this zone is it stays in a jelly format okay jelly means which is not so hard not so in liquid form so that is asthenosphere and if you look at the picture you can easily get that our crust or surface of the earth it is just above this asthenosphere you can see that crust is floating on asthenosphere okay now let's move on to new chapter that is landforms of earth First question, what is the definition? Like topic wise we will discuss. First is, what is the definition of landform? Landforms are generally the natural features that are located on the surface of the earth. Now how many landforms are there? In our earth surface, you can find three major landforms. What are they? First is mountain. Second is table land or plateau. After that, plains and then the sea level. So, three major landforms. First, I told you that is mountain. Second is plateau. And last one is plains. I hope you all are acquainted with these names. So, three major landforms are generally located on the surface of the earth. Now one important question comes over here that is how can they form? So our second question will be the formation. The formation. What are the processes that involved in the formation of these landforms? In that part we will discuss about three points. Number one it is Plate tectonic. What is this? Plate tectonic. T-E-C-H-T-O-N-I-C-S. Plate tectonic. Or in some books it is written plate tectonics. Number B is uplift. Upliftment and submergence. Submergence. Just look at the points. First is plate tectonics. Second is upliftment and submergence. And number C that is exogenetic. Exogenetic process. So three processes are generally involved in the formation of this landforms. One by one we will discuss. So what is the first point? That is plate tectonic. Now what are the plates? Definitely it is not the T plates. Okay. Okay. So the plates are if you divide our crust into so many pieces. Like only the crust part I am drawing. Okay. Suppose this is the crust part and you are just dividing the crust into so many pieces. Then some broken pieces you will get. That broken pieces are known as plates. Okay. And these plates, they generally move in a very slow motion. 
okay beneath the earth surface now by this they can form the landforms how here we can find three types of plates and three types of movement also number one it is convergent convergent number two it is divergent please write or see the names properly and last one is transform transform so how many plates you can find that is first convergent plate divergent plate and transform plate now what are this first i told you all that is convergent convergent means when two plates will come to each other suppose this is one plate this is another plate when this two plate will move towards each other then it is known as convergent done when two plates are moving towards each other now next one divergent when these two plates will move against each other or to their opposite side then it is divergent done when two plates are moving towards each other it is convergent when two plates are moving away towards each other that means divergent and last one is transform what is transform when one plate will just sliding away to another plate okay they will just cross one another like this they will just cross one another it is transform so three types of plates you have already understood now for the formation of landform one of the most important plate that works on that that is convergent now just look at this what is this this is a simple copy through this you can easily understand suppose this is one plate this side this side of the paper it is one plate it is another plate okay now they are standing still when the pressure will come now see two plates are moving towards each other and what is going on middle portion is just uplifted so like this when the two plates are coming towards each other then which type of features you can find to take place that is mountain okay so generally convergent plate is responsible for the formation of mountains done and the process of mountain building is known as orogenesis orogenesis done orogenesis means the mountain building so plate tectonic completed three types of plate tectonic movement we have learnt one is convergent another is divergent another is transform that is just sliding or crossing one another and due to the orogenic process that means when the two plates are coming towards each other middle portion will be uplifted by this process so many mountain features can be formed on the surface of the earth so plate tectonic is done now what was the second point i told you all that was upliftment and submergence right so upliftment and submergence that is also very important suppose just look at my hand this is one landform okay it is plain now from here from the beneath of the earth surface because it is the surface of the earth and beneath the earth surface if the pressure will be occurring or pressure will be placed on this surface then what will happen see the middle portion it will go up okay the middle portion will go up like this so this process is known as upliftment process or epeirogenic process okay a p e r o g e n i c what is the meaning of epeirogenic most of the continents on the earth surface are generally made up of epeirogenic movement done now submergence when the middle portion is uplifted see the siding part of this 
upper zone it is submerged okay so this process is very much important for creation of landforms on the surface of the earth now last point that is a exogenetic process now what is this exogenetic process exo means obviously when the pressure is or the forces is coming from outside outside means exo endo means which is going on inside so exo means outside when the forces are giving from the outside of the earth surface suppose this is one landform okay on the landform wind is working water is working then what will happen the landform will be eroded suppose it was like this and then it will be like this so this part will be eroded away by the agents of the exogenetic force so like this the height will be degraded so this is also important for the creation of landform so what was i telling that exogenetic forces mean when the forces are occurring on a particular type of landform from the outside like wind water they are located outside of the earth surface no and when they will be created or they will be forcing their power to a certain type of landforms automatically landform will be eroded okay and like this several features will be take taken place on the surface of the earth so these were the three basic things or three basic points for the formation of landforms in our next class we shall discuss about the major landforms of the earth surface thank you